Darwin Nunes is a Liverpool football player. He will become the second most expensive transfer in Portuguese football. It is done. It has now been reported that he will sign a five-year deal with a salary of €6 million Euros net per season. Darwin Nunes already announced the decision to his family and friends. Liverpool are just waiting for the all-clear to announce from Benfica. But it is done. It is dusted. Man United had some futile late attempts to hijack and to gatecrash the deal. We said on the football terrace that that was very, very unlikely. The head was turned. The Jurgen Klopp pull, the, the desire for Darwin Nunes to play for this Liverpool team at this moment in time was far too strong. We're going to delve into that deal. We want your views and your opinions. Though. A big thank you to everybody leaving your thank yous. The support you give the terrace does not go unnoticed. We work hard to bring you the news as quick and as um, as detailed as we possibly can to give you the fans a platform to have your say. Everyone that comments on these recorded videos and, of course, takes part in our live phone-in shows, nothing but love and appreciation for you. But Liverpool, Darwin Nunes, done deal over the line, according to the mainstream media. But I want your thoughts and your feelings. Let's go! <laughs> Darwin Nunes, a Liverpool player. It may appear quick. It may appear swift, but we're going to delve into that in a little bit more detail for you. He will become the most expensive, second most expensive player, as stated there by Record Portugal. The second most expensive transfer in Portuguese football. It is done. 80 plus 20 in add-ons. Variables are easily achievable, but it is done you have here a reporter here, Pedro, who has stated it is also done a five-year deal, six million euros net. So that is net. That is after tax that that is being reported. So it is a big, big deal that Liverpool are offering him. And Liverpool had to. They had to offer him a big, big deal. They had to make it substantial. They had to do that. Of course they did. Manchester City spending money. Other clubs, of course, coming in and going to be spending big, big money this summer. There's no doubt about it. As we mentioned at the top, very late on, it was reported that Man United went in with a last-minute bid, a an attempt to offer better terms, more money than Liverpool. What I've been told is by some journalists is they don't think that that was ever offered or made. Other journalists have said they've heard that it was, but it wasn't substantial enough. In fact, Manchester United were at a point where they said they didn't want to get into a bidding war. They didn't want to overpay by too much money, not because they didn't fancy Darwin Nunes. So don't let that become the narrative here. We're very fair on the football terrace. A lot of United platforms will play this deal down now. Man United didn't want to eat too much into their budget because, of course, they've got a number of players, uh, positions that need to be addressed. Man United have said they want to take a different approach this year. And it's very much about if we don't get a number one and number two targets, we'll focus on other areas of the pitch where we can land our main targets. This is a marathon and not a race in many, many ways. But for Liverpool, as I've stated for a while now, this is an absolutely crucial, an absolutely crucial deal. A crucial deal for, for, for Manchester United to... Sorry, for Liverpool Football Club to get done and get over the line. And I'll tell you as to why it's, it's imperative. It's imperative because Haaland's going to City. Alvarez is going to City. Chelsea are looking like they're going to strengthen. And Liverpool need to move with the times. And I'm actually quite happy to see Liverpool do this. Not as a Man United fan. As a Man United fan, I hate this deal. As a Man United fan, this is not a good deal. But I've been having this debate with Liverpool fans online for a long time now. The Liverpool model, the money ball model, in my opinion, it works once when building an entire squad. And even then, you look at the transfer fees for the for the likes of Allison, the likes of Van Dijk. They had to splash big still, just that sprinkling of stardust needed to make them 
have the ability to win Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues. The problem is when you raise the levels up here, two things happen. First and foremost, you can't get away with continually buying players cheap that are a lot better than their, their value dictates. Because you prove to be a, a club that has the ability to spot talent that maybe even the parent club or the owner of that player at that time doesn't see. So as soon as you become interested, it's a bit like if an antiques expert turns up at your house and wants to buy this vase or a photo or a or, or, a, or a, a painting that you think is pretty worthless. If an antique dealer turns up and wants it, famous antique dealer, you're like, hang on a minute. Maybe this is worth a little bit more than they're letting on. So you hold on to it. That's, that was always going to happen to Liverpool. On top of that, you're bringing in players now to keep you at the top of the tree. So you are going to pay me like a player that keeps you at the top of the tree. You're not buying me as a prospect that might be able to become good enough that for a team that might be able to come good enough. You're, you're a foregone conclusion. You're there. You're at the top of the tree. And, and there is a third reason. The income and the, and the financial rewards that come with being successful then create players demanding more remuneration, more compensation, more money, more bonuses. And Liverpool are going to have to act. And that doesn't mean every single signing of Liverpool now is going to be 70, 80, 90 million pounds. No. Again, that's a, that's a very polarized, binary, basic, basic thing to say. That, that isn't what it is. So that isn't going to happen. But there are times where Liverpool have got to go out and spend big. And they've kind of been kicking the can for a few seasons now. And a lot of the fans are defending SFG, defending the way the club's been operating. But you have to go out and buy it the best the best available in the market to you. And you have to spend big to do it. And Liverpool have tried three times this summer. And it's kind of gone unnoticed. Mbappe confirmed that Liverpool were in for him. That would have been big money. They tried to sign two of many. That was a, that's a hundred million euro package to sign him. And they've just done another hundred million euro package for Darwin Nunes. Liverpool are spending the money that they earn, they're earning through increasing the stadium capacity, the new money for sponsorships, the new Nike deal, the new... TV deals that continue to flurry in. Liverpool are spending because Liverpool want to win the Premier League. Liverpool want to win the Champions League. This is something that Liverpool fans should be celebrating and not trying to find some obscure back alley loopholes to why, well, actually, it's not considered spending. Let people banter you. Everybody's jealous, barring Man City. Everybody's jealous that not only you can spend, but you're at the top of the tree. So, of course, you're going to get salt from United fans, Chelsea fans, Arsenal fans, Liverpool fans. Yes, you're going to get bantered by people who are going to laugh at you for claiming that Klopp doesn't buy stars, Klopp doesn't spend big money, Klopp can turn anybody into a world-class player. No, we all know that's a fallacy in reality. We all know that's, a, that's fans praising and bigging up a manager they love, and it's absolutely fine. But just take the banter. I would do it the other way. I'd be gloating. When Liverpool were linked to Darwin Nunes, in the first few days, Liverpool fans turned, turned, rejected the notion. Because at the time, it was reported that United were closer. And what they didn't want is to go, yeah, yeah, win for him. And then lose out and go, oh, we, got, we lost out to Man United. The smart Liverpool fans read the room, read the reports, listened to the journalists and thought, we've got a really good chance here. I'm going to back these reports and rumours. Now I get to laugh at Man United for being rejected. And I'll bring this back round because we're a fan channel. We speak about this from a fan point of view as well. This is tremendous business for Liverpool. He will score goals. You need goals to compete with what Haaland's doing. You're spending the money that we know your club has got. We all know your club's got money. You're spending it. The fans are going to be happy with that. The fans are going to be on board with that. The fans are going to be supportive of that. They really, really are. And there's still a long way to go this summer. There's still a lot of players to be purchased by a number of teams. But Liverpool are starting phenomenally well responding to that city purchase strengthening their front line even more they're bringing in a replacement for Sadio Mane before he's even gone the Vokarigi is of course left but they've been even if they buy someone else to replace Mane now which they could very well do the leveling up on the Vokarigi and I know he's a cult hero but Darwin Nunes is levels above the Vokarigi with an even higher potential ceiling this is, and I'm saying this as a Manchester United fan, this is a phenomenal piece of business from Liverpool Football Club. Of course, the extra, the extra sort of string to the bow, the extra kind of 
uh, fun aspect for Liverpool fans, damning aspect for Man United fans is that you managed to get your biggest rivals rejected. But it's done. It is dusted. It is over the line. I want your thoughts. I want your feelings. Subscribe to the Football Terrace now. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless.